Now, we've had a week uh, of European Championship football. Uh, much of it has been fascinating and really superb games. Uh, Germany and Portugal on Saturday, for example. Not all of it has been. Some of it's been deadly boring. And tonight there's a game nobody will want to watch. Ukraine and Austria. Uh, a draw will see them both progress, they think. So that might there might be no action. 24 teams qualified for this tournament. And they've taken or are going to take about 10 days to get it down to 16, and then the serious tournament begins. Far too many teams in it, in my opinion. I'm joined now by John Giles to look back at the games we have seen involving England, Germany, Belgium. Uh, John, just a thought, they're playing so many games, and really it's only to eliminate eight uh, nations who probably shouldn't be there in the first place. They're asking an awful yeah. lot of players, uh, of players, and uh, just in the case of Harry Kane, as an example, player who's quality is undoubted, looks absolutely dead tired and he's not the only top player because those top players play so much. It's just too much football to no real point in North Macedonia, Ukraine, Austria, they probably shouldn't be there in the first place. Uh, yeah, I don't quite agree with you on that, Eamon. Right. No, you because don't, if yeah. you, if, well, if you're from Macedonia yeah. Eamon, or if you're from the Republic of Ireland, yes, as we are, and we qualified. Yeah. You know, the, the, the country's go mad. Oh, I mean, yeah, okay, there's they're, a lot of they're not going to win it, but, yeah. but it extends the game, I mean, generally. And yeah. I think this is exceptional this year with the amount of guys. I agree with you with the amount of games that the players are playing now. It's too much. Uh, but that wasn't planned. I mean, that we were supposed to be doing this year under uh, normal circumstances. I think it, it. I think it expands the game, Eamon. Right. That, that's what I think overall. Because no matter where they come from, whether it's Macedonia or anybody else, they love to get there. They love to be on the big stage. Yeah, they yeah. know they're not we, going we to know win. Ourselves. You know? Yeah, no, we know ourselves from the joy it spread, but we won't fight that fight now. Um, okay. What, what we will do now? <laughs> we call that a draw. Then we call that a draw. <laughs> uh, a game that, that was fascinating uh, and everyone was looking forward to it took place on Friday. England and Scotland at Wembley. Yeah. I actually thought it would be what it became, a battle, a war. Uh, I yeah. thought I didn't, wasn't impressed with England, John, against Croatia in their opening game. Mm. And I just knew, despite the fact that Scots had had a bad result against the Czech Republic, a result aided by the best goal of the tournament, um, incidentally, I thought Scotland were great, John, and I thought England yeah, were late. great. Well, I, 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 I mean, I thought the opposite of you. Yeah, I know you did. You told me you'd kill, I, they'd kill me. I thought, I thought, I thought they'd win by three now. I didn't fancy the Scots at all. Yeah. I mean, I, I know England were hyped, as they normally are, after the first match against Croatia, and they won 1-0. Um, but I, was, I, was, I couldn't see Scotland having enough players to yeah. cope with them. Yeah. And of course they did. And they did it brilliantly. Probably should have won the match, I mean. Yeah. So you got it right. I got it wrong. Yeah, I didn't w w want to necessarily make that point. I wouldn't want to go I into know a, you don't. I'm only I wouldn't want to go into a contest <laughs> with you about getting it right. <laughs> uh, there'd be only one winner there. The, the, I suppose the big uh, question it raises, John, the bookmakers had England joint favourites with France before the tournament. But we've seen this movie before with England, haven't we? where they kind of freeze on a big occasion. The invention and uh, fearlessness you need is gone, and they sort of seem afraid of it uh, and not, not able for the occasion. I thought that was very much the case on Friday night. Yeah, well, a lot of that's down to the manager, I mean, to get them right and get them up and get them do the things they did. I, I, it didn't make sense to me before. The first match, when he put Trippier in at yeah. left back, then it comes to the Scottish match, and he puts two, he puts two yeah. new lads in all together. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, why? Why would you do that? I mean, you put James in and uh, it, it, Luke, Luke it, Shaw, it, yeah. It, Luke Shaw. You know, I mean, why would you do that? Have him won the first match. Uh, is that tactics? Is this, they're going to play in a certain way. We're going to do this and that. I think it's total nonsense. Eh? Yeah. And it, it doesn't help anybody. No, but, uh, and... Uh, I was, they, well, Scotland were good value for the draw. Oh, in, yeah. In fact, they oh, yeah. they had a chance. Yeah. And, I mean, England had a great chance when Stones uh, hit the post mm. with a header. But uh, basically, England now, they've the next game they've got to play 
would be a pressure game as well. Everything they do now is pressure. You don't fancy Southgate. I don't much either. He hasn't much of a um, a CV as a manager, John. He, no, he I managed don't get him, Middlesbrough. Man. No, he managed Middlesbrough. I don't care for the... Yeah, I know you got the... Yeah, you've got oh, really? yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's a good PR man, Eamon. There's no doubt. He puts he comes over well to the... But that doesn't mean he's a great manager. You know what I mean? No. <laughs> some, some of the great managers are not PR men at all. They just get on with the job of doing the team. Yeah. And I don't think he does that. You know, he was on about... Uh, the other day, there was a, there was a bit of a, a goal between the goalkeeper and the centre-back about um, Pickford knocking it long. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he was asked about it after the match and and, and, and he made, he made uh, an amazing uh, uh, statement, I mean, uh, in my opinion. He said, well, he said, you know, he, as an England team manager, I don't have as much time with the players as a club manager. Yeah. And uh, therefore, we can't practice our patterns. Yeah. Yeah. Now this is go- googly gook as far yeah. as I can see. Yeah. You don't. What's practice in your patterns? You know what I mean. Yeah. And he's had the players. He's had the players probably last three weeks, which yes. is long enough to do what needs to be do. But patterns means you, you. This is what you do in training, and you give it to him, and you give it to him, and give it to him. What about the opposition? Yeah. You know, like it, 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 it's it's googly gook, and 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 yeah. it sounds good, but it doesn't mean anything. So. I, I, I don't I don't get him. I mean, I think he's going on a wing and a prayer all the time. Yeah. And, now, uh, the, I, I thought the, the, the management too, I've taken uh, Kane off, Subban Kane, I thought was bad management, Damon. Yeah, right. Although he did look, uh, he does look, John, very, very, very tired. Now... He does, he does. He's not himself, Eamon. You know, yeah. he's not himself. But, like, with, with, with a lad that's done so much for the team, Eamon, like... There's always a possibility, no matter how 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 tired he looks, of getting your goal. Yes, I you know, of getting yeah. he's getting your goal. I mean, he nearly got one. Remember, the lad did well to get back. Now, yeah. when he scores that, I mean, he's forgiven everything, yeah. you know, and that's that's that's, that's on the spur of the moment thing. You know, I think if you've got a player like Kane, you, okay, it's it's whatever time of twenty minutes to go, you live with it. Yeah, absolutely. You, you live with that, you know. Yeah. Well, they have to. Anyway, but, they're playing the Czech yeah. Republic now on Tuesday. Uh, yeah. Tomorrow again at Wembley, which is a huge advantage. And uh, interestingly, in the qualifying round, the only team to beat England was the Czech Republic, and they don't look like they're uh, a particularly good side. What is interesting, John, is if England win the group, as they probably will, they play the second place team in the group of death, which is Group F. This is France, Germany, Portugal. Um, yeah. So. Uh, it's hard to say after the first round when France went to Munich and beat Germany, it looked like it could be Portugal and France going on. But Germany were outstanding, John, against yeah. Portugal. Uh, having gone one nil down, I thought they were toast. But boy, they played, didn't they? Yeah. Well, I I, I would agree with you totally on that, Eamon. You know, the mm. first match they played against uh, France. I thought they were gone. I thought they were, they were over the hill as a team. Yes. Although, although France were a bit lucky that France didn't play particularly well on the night, but I thought they'd gone as a team. So going into the match the other day against Portugal, I mean, uh, you know, if I was a bet man, I'd had a few bob on, on Portugal. Yeah. But but uh, Germany were excellent. I mean, yeah. Really, really good. They were like their old selves and they, they totally killed uh, 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 Portugal on the day. Yeah, one Rope performance. Them well. One performance mm. in particular, the left wing back Gosen, guy I'd never mm. heard of before. Uh, uh, he scored a goal that was disallowed for offside. Yeah. Uh, it was a brilliant goal, but he, yeah, yeah. but he, all through the game, he was whipping in crosses. A couple of them led to goals. In the end, he scored one himself. He looked like a super player. I don't know where he came from, uh, but. Uh, I, I know he won't be out of that team. The other guy who came back is Muller. He's he's, he's thirty nine yeah. or something. Yeah, uh, I thought he was finished, Damon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, think a yeah. lot of people did think he was finished. Yeah. But he's a great sort of warrior. Uh, he poses a threat all the time, uh, and I thought he played really well. He did, Damon. He, he's an experienced player. You know, as we know, he's a goal scorer. You know, yeah. But he's an experienced player. Always been honest in what he did. Uh, very, very good, and I'm delighted to see him back. He deserves to, he deserves to do it at this particular stage in his career. Yeah, I mean, John, you were talking to me before we came on about Gnabry, who played up front for yeah. um, Germany and played really well. 
Uh, he's a player we we know a little bit about. He scored a few goals for uh, Bayern Munich uh, at Tottenham one night. Uh, but he's been in and out of all the teams he's played for, including Bayern Munich. So he was a revelation too yeah. um, on Saturday. Yeah, he was. I mean, there was a life about him. I didn't know much about him, as you say. He's been in and out of the team there. But uh, he, he looked like a real player in terms of, uh, especially with Muller, who, is, who, who doesn't yeah. do, can't, I suppose, uh, do so much running around up front. But he made up for he made up for that, and I think he was good for for Muller. I, mean, I think yeah. he brought the best out of him. In other words, Muller doesn't have to do as much chasing around with this kid in the team, you know. So he, yeah. I was surprised at him. And I didn't really know much about him at all, to be quite honest. No, but he the good. other uh, young fella who did really well was Kai Havertz. He's gone. He went to Chelsea. He struggled a bit in the Premier League, uh, but he really played well against Portugal. He was involved in uh, the goals, important goals. Uh, as well, the other guy who did really well was Tony Crowe's midfield player. Got a yeah, hold of the game. Lad, I mean, yeah. He yeah. got a yeah. hold of the ball. Got a hold of yeah. the game. And I, I, I did say, I did feel that their two Portugal's two midfield players, Danilo and Cavalho, didn't really. They were too stationary, too stiff, big, tall, defensive shields, really. Uh, yeah. But Crowe's uh, and Kimmich, who's a very, very good player, also they played around. Yeah. Um, and they showed great spirit to the Germans. Now, they were really good, Eamon. As I said, yeah. the previous match, I'd written them off. Yeah. I thought they've gone. Uh, there's no chance for them now. Uh, I, although they were a little bit unlucky against France, but they didn't play well. Neither did France on the night either. But I thought, oh no, these are gone. I think they're finished. Uh, so I was totally surprised at, uh, at, at that performance against Portugal. Uh, they were really, really good. and back on form now. They have to be. They have to be one of the dangers, Eamon. Yeah, they very much do, and they have another significant. Um, well, it's very important. It could lead to an England Germany game at Wembley, which would evoke uh, memories of the <laughs> the 1966 World Cup final. Um, the 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 question now, I suppose, is what what they will do to Hungary who is next on their list, um, and that's in Budapest. Now, France, on Saturday, were very very much expected uh, to do a number on Hungary, but they got the fright of their life, John. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, 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 I think the, whatever happens now, I mean, in that particular uh, uh, panel, panel, those teams, yeah. it's going to be difficult for England anyway. I mean, and it's yeah. got to be France, Portugal, or Germany, hasn't it? Yes, so yeah. you, could, you take a pick with any of them, uh, it, it, it's going to be a biggie, yeah. that's for sure. And it's not going to be easy for England. It's not one of the, what happens if England finish in second? Did they play the second? No, they play the winner of, of the group of death. So oh, it, that's even worse. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's even worse, yeah. <laughs> I think England have Czech Republic and uh, they should be able to beat them, but we'll see. Uh, but either way, the Germany, Portugal, um, France group will play uh, England, one of those three. One or the other, yeah. yeah. So that's not, not yeah, that's no, there's no easy one there, Eamon. No. That's, that's if, 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 if France start playing as, as well as we expect them to do, and Portugal, and of course Germany, if they're re, 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 revitalised as they were, look the other day, uh, is none of those are going to be easy matches for them. Now France against Hungary, John, I watched with great interest because I backed France mm. to win it. Um, mm. And I'm not, I'm not particularly happy, I must say, they they missed. I mean, uh, I, I I I they missed chances. I mean, uh, Mbappe missed a real chance. Yeah, I mean, he's a wonderful player, great player. There's no doubt he's going to be a great player. He's got so much, uh, so many assets. But Griezmann missed a sitter, and then they gave a very soft goal away. Uh, and yeah. they haven't given they don't give many goals away, France. But they gave a very soft goal away to Hungary. The crowd, there were 60,000 in that stadium. It was a home match, of course, for Hungary. But France didn't show the battling qualities, did they? They have, they've, they've, well, they've only played, I've only, well, we've only seen them two matches, I mean. But they're not, they're not playing anywhere near as well as I expected them to, to play and as professionally as you would expect them to play. You know, they yeah. just... Uh, they, 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 they're not, I know that that happens as we've seen in, in lots of competitions before. I mean, you know, tournaments where teams start off badly and and then and then pick it up. Uh, yes. So 
it, it's we've like, we only seen them in two matches. We expected more from them, but but sometimes teams grow into it, you know. Uh, so they have the quality, but they've got to get about their business in a way that they have. Neither neither Portugal, I mean, you know, no. France had a bad, uh, Germany had a bad, but Germany have come back in a big way in the second match. So, uh, but it has happened before where teams don't start off very well and then grow into it. Yeah, well, and of course, it'll be interesting to see when Germany go to play Hungary um, on Wednesday night in Budapest, how they uh, deal with the atmosphere that's generated by the home crowd there. The 60,000, none of them are wearing masks. A lot of them look like uh, they might be fascists, but they certainly get behind the team, and it had, yeah. it had a very obvious effect uh, on yeah. the team again, in, in the game against France. Just to look at France again, just to remind ourselves, John, they've got uh, Griezmann, Benzema, and Bappi. That's their sort of strike force. They have yeah. uh, Kante in midfield. They have Varane, uh, centre-back, a really good player. Pavard, the right-back, is a very, very good player, and he was at fault for the goal that Hungary scored. Yeah. Um, and then they have our old friend Pogba, who everyone is raving about. John, how, have, how has he seemed to you in this uh, tournament so far? Um, well, I put Kante way ahead of him, Eamon. Yeah. You know, I think against Germany, he played a good pass, um, but then, then gave the ball away a lot. I, 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 you know, I, I wouldn't rave about him. I wouldn't have given him man of the match at all, Eamon. Yeah, he, but he, he's, he's, capable, yeah. He is, he's capable of producing the pass. Of course he is. Yeah. But it, 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 it's just his attitude. And like, if you're looking at attitude, you look at Kante and say, that's the way to play. You know, yeah. in terms of getting after the ball, getting chasing back, doing all the things you want you want players to do. I mean, ability, that's your starting point. You, you don't have to be blessed with an awful lot of ability to do the running and do the, do the hard stuff. Then your, your, your ability comes into play. I mean, the, 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 like if I was picking two players to play for France tomorrow, I'd pick Kante in front of, 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 uh, of Pogba, although yeah. Kante can't produce the passes that Pogba can do. But yeah. you know what you're going to get from him, and it's it's effort and honesty and that. I don't. I just sometimes in the game he's, he's very good, Pogba. Other times it's just his attitude is not good at all. And I think attitude is your starting point. Yeah. Well, in, in that regard, there's a news story this morning that I'm sure you'll appreciate. He's got one year left on his contract mm. at Old Trafford, uh, Paul Pogba, mm. and it looks like he's going to sign a new contract now for another three years. He's going to be the highest paid player at Old Trafford. He's going to be earning 400 grand a week. So somebody doesn't agree with our assessment of, uh, of Paul Pogba. Yeah, that, that, I, I, that could be a financial thing as well, Eamon. Yeah, yeah, um, well, they can't. You know, you know what I mean? Walk. Like, we know in 12 months' year, time, he, he can walk, yeah. He can walk, Yeah. you know? Yeah. So the, 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 that wouldn't be Solskjaer making that the football decision on that, Eamon. No, no. I think that would be the money man at Old Trafford making yeah. that decision. We yeah. can't afford to let. We paid ninety million for him. Next year he can go for nothing. Okay, we give him an extra hundred grand and we keep him. You know that's yeah. a. Um, I, I, I'm not so sure it'd be a great rush for him, Eamon, if he was on the transfer list at the ninety odd million that he cost Manchester yeah. United. Now there's another bit of breaking news. It's just broken while we've. Uh, in fact, you gave it to me uh, before we started this conversation, John. Billy Gilmore, uh, the young lad, a young Chelsea midfield player who both of us love to watch and played very, very well against England on Friday night. He's gone down with COVID, mm. which is a blow to Scotland. It's a blow to the lad, of course. Uh, also a blow to Scotland's chances because he's, he's a really good playmaker, old-fashioned mm. sort of playmaker. John, you like him a lot, don't you? Yeah. I, he's the best young midfield player I've seen for a long, long time, Eamon. Yeah. A positional sense, getting on the ball, using the ball. He, I think he'll become a really, really top-class all round player. Yeah. But but how he got COVID, I mean, I know that's a different subject. Yeah. Nowadays with the teams is 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 is, is unbelievable. Yeah, it is. Unbelievable. Uh, yep. Yeah, um it's bad news for Scotland. It's bad news for Billy. Um and one thing I'd say about him, John, he's a wonderful player. He does he have the physical strength, the upper body strength to become a great player? Because I think you need that. Oh yeah, I think so. I mean, he's very young. I think he's yeah. only is he only nineteen 20. now. Yeah, twenty. You know, he's, yeah. he's young. I, no, I, 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 I think. Um, I mean, there's a lot of midfield players need the physical strength more than others. I mean, there's no harm 
having a lot of vision. But I mean, if you get players like him, and, and I've seen players like him in the past, I mean, with his positional sense, there's nobody gets near him. No, no. He's you know, if you no. if you watch him, like all the great players, especially midfield players, where where did he get the space from? Yeah, has he got yeah. time to do it? Can he get his head up? Yeah, you you know you you've, play, you've played and seen players yeah. in the past, terrifically gifted lads. Yeah, but there's always somebody around them. Yes, yeah, and they don't have time to get their head up. I mean, what he shows, what I find uh, uh, very very good for him is a positional sense. You know, you very hear, seldom hear people in the game talking about positional sense. Eh? Yeah. And particularly as a midfield, well, any player, but particularly a midfield player, it's 90% of the game. Yes, it is. It's getting into yeah. position to receive the ball where you say, well, where did he get the space from? Yeah, now... So uh, there, there doesn't have to be such a physical physical element to it. But of course, that, that could be it. But he's only young. I think he'd be okay in that respect. Okay, let's talk about one of the most, perhaps the most impressive side uh, so far, John, in the tournament. And I would emphasise that it... It is really only designed this first ten days to get rid of the dead wood, and things will pick up uh, when we get to the knockout stages mm. at the end of this week. Italy, mm. um, yeah. Mancini has done an amazing job. Uh, we knew we know him from Manchester City, where he won uh, the Premier League. One has to say, uh, Italy. Um, you know they had a tough game yesterday against Wales. But they haven't lost for 29 games now. Uh, they've kept clean sheets. They are so good uh, and they work so hard. I was hugely impressed. Now, the, the only thing that you'd say you want to qualify that remark with is that the first two teams they played were Turkey and Switzerland and neither of those sides are any good at all and they don't even try. What have you made of Italy, John? I, th- I think they've been good, Eamon, um, and I think they've made a good start, unlike some of the other top teams that we expected to do. But again, you, you, you alluded to it there about playing the, the sorry, the, 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 the opposition, um, and but you have to do the business against the opposition. Yes, you, do, you know, yeah. you have to get yeah. at them, and, and it's, it's your attitude that matters, not the, not the opposition. And their attitude has been has been excellent. I mean, I think they made eight changes. For the match against Wales the other day, yeah, I mean, yeah, um, and I think is Verratti in the team all the time. Verratti w- has been injured. He's had a very bad injury, has he? ankle injury. Yeah. He played yesterday against Wales uh, mm. with a, a heavy strapping on his ankle. He was the mm. man of the match. He's a really yeah, good player, he, John. Yeah. He, he was the man of the match. It was his first appearance, and I was watching Liam and Didi talking about the game, and uh, Liam in particular knows the Italians very well. And he said he thought that Verratti would struggle to get in after their first two games when mm-hmm. they both they won both games three nil and the players yeah. who came in for Verratti uh, did did really really well. So yeah. he came back yesterday against Wales and he did play very very well. Although yeah. he has got a heavy strapping on his ankle and it yeah. looks like a ligament problem. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, well, he played well. He must be okay, Eamon, if, he, if he's able to play. I mean, he must be some player. He had his ankle was bothering him yesterday, and he still played the way he played. Yeah, he played really so, well. You know, that's a good. And I, I noticed the other player yesterday. I mean, number seven, Kezo. He looked. He might know. Every time he got the ball, I mean, yeah, he took the left back on. Yeah, I think it was a young lad. It was a young Williams fan, but he yes. gave him a right chase. Now I don't know whether he's in the team regularly or not. He is. Yeah. Is yeah, he? he's a, yeah, he's a. Yeah, he's a. He's a. But he's not. He's a borderline. But he was in the. He played in the other two games. Uh, in the tournament, so he's a, he's a very very good player. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean he's one of the few players you see going past anybody. You know, you see a lot of teams now. It's played out to the winger. It starts again. You go across the pitch, and as soon as he got it yesterday, boom, having a go at the fullback. He yeah. didn't beat him all the time, but he beat him a lot. Yeah. So I'd say that'd be a, a, a huge plus for them. But again, regardless of the teams they played against them, it's your attitude that matters. You don't take your attitude from the opposition. Yeah. So that's what that's what Italy have done. They don't care who they're playing against, whether it's a supposedly weaker team or not. They're going to do their business. Now, and that's that, what they did. And I thought yeah. they were good yesterday against, uh, really good against um, Wales. Uh, Wales, now, very good. Yeah. There's one player in that Italian side that proves the, what you're saying is d- spot on. Jorginho. We watch him at Chelsea. Neither of us, mm-hmm. I think, are particularly uh, admirers of his. But boy, he gets wor- He's working. He's working for Mancini harder than he ever works for Chelsea. He's getting tackles in. He's up and down the pitch. It's amazing stuff, John. 
When they, well, if you look at the, again, you go back to the manager, Eamon. That's what managers demand. And this guy, he's what has he got? Twenty odd, odd games unbeaten, Eamon. Uh, well, they're twenty eight, twenty nine, possibly. Twenty eight. Is yeah. it that much? Yeah. Well, that's that's extraordinary. It is extraordinary. But that's when you know yeah. a manager is really doing his stuff. In other words, there, there's consistency there. Yeah. And when you, how you start consistency is attitude, Eamon. Yeah. Attitude is your starting point. It's nothing to do with skill. Don't you do what hard players can do? Attitude to go and work hard when you haven't got the ball and do all the things that hard working teams do. And that's what that's what Chelsea are uh, sorry, that's what uh, Italy, Italy are doing. doing yeah. And yeah, that yeah. goes back to the manager, Eamon. Of course. Now, John, Belgium. Uh, they have they are in the world rankings, which in football mean they don't they're not very accurate reflection of mm. uh how good a team is. Belgium are number one ranked team in the world. They've played two games. They've scored, they've got six points, they've scored plenty of goals, Lukaku scored a couple in the first game, and they beat Denmark uh, there on Saturday, went a goal down actually, Mm. Uh, but they're top of their group, they're going to qualify, you've looked at them, Mm. Uh, De Bruyne played, not in the first game because of the injury he got in the Champions League, but he did play against Denmark and played well by all accounts. Yeah, I watched the match aiming and... Denmark could have been three up after 20 minutes. Really? They were one nil up? Yeah. I know, really? Oh, they missed aim and they were, they were killing them. Right. Belgium were terrible. Yeah. Now, half time comes, they bring the uh, De Bruyne De on yes. at half time, and they, they, they later on the game, they brought, brought Aiden uh, Hazard on. Y- yes, right. The Bruyne changed the whole game for the moment. Right. Now, in, you in know, at field. times I'm not his greatest fan. Yeah. He changed the game totally for them. He made the first goal, yeah. and he scored the second goal himself. Right. And Belgium were a totally different team to the first. Now I mean, totally different. Yeah, I didn't they totally the match, outplayed actually. Denmark at that stage. They could have been. He made a huge, no, a, a, a fantastic change to the team. Now, whether it was the manager having a go at them at half time, they were terrible in the first half. Really, really poor. Could have been three down at half time. And they, they dominate the second half with, with as I say, with De Bruyne scoring a goal and making a goal. Okay, let me really, ask you. really transformed them. Let me ask you about Eden Hazard, who has had a, a, a nightmare time. I think he's only played mm. three, 23 games in the two years he's been at Real Madrid. Yeah. He went for a huge fee. He turned up for training uh, in the first preseason training, a stone overweight. Has had injuries. How did he look? And how did he play? He looked better, Eamon. Right. And he looked like his old self. Well, funny enough, it was his brother. Torgan Hazard. Scored a second goal. I think he was in the team before him. He was, yeah. You know, he, he, Hazard came on a half. But he did do his stuff. They, 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 the Brian particularly transformed him in the second half. They were in for a hiding them. I and really, if, if Denmark had taken their chances early on, they could have gone in 3 0 at half time. Yeah. But second half, now they really played. And, and, and the, the two subs d- did make a huge difference to them. And uh, finally, John Spain. Uh, it's a team, a country with a fantastic record and with a history of producing great teams and great players. Uh, twice winners of this in recent memory at uh, 2008 uh, when, when they were absolutely amazing with Xavi and Yes, the, and all those David Silva yeah. and all those wonderful players. Um, they've had two really poor results, nil-nil against uh, Sweden uh, in their first game and 1-1 against Poland in their second game, John. Mm. And I know you watched that game. I watched both of them. Mm. They just don't have nothing, do they? No. The, I, I, just, I, I put one thing down on the, the thing here, then. tippy-tappy. Yeah. It's tippy-tappy stuff. They're not going anywhere. No. It, 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 it's amazing. The, the only consolation they have, a good thing gone in their favour, they have the, 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 this... Uh, Young kid playing Pedri. Amen. Yes, yeah, he's at Barcelona. He's, he's only eighteen. I think he's the youngest yeah. player to play for Spain. He's at Barcelona. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he looks a real player. Amen. Right. Now that's that's the only good thing I can say about them in the matches that I've seen them in. Yeah. Tippy tappy, going going up to the edge of the box, pull him back, finish up at the back, need a goal. Uh, just no no penetration and and no zip about them at all. Uh, hugely disappointing, as you say, for a, a, a country that's produced the players that they've had yeah. in fairly recent years. So they don't look anywhere, um, really don't. OK, well, I just want to ask you one final thing. Cristiano Ronaldo, uh, with the goal he scored against Germany, 
He he is top of the all time leading goal scorers in World Cup and yeah. Euros combined. He is amazing, isn't he, John? I mean, he I ran mean, sixty seventy yeah. yards. Yes. Uh, to yes. get on the end of a little pass, a clever little pass, Jota played into him. Uh, yeah, he, I mean, he got the header away. He did, I know, yeah, it was brilliant. From the corner kick, he, he yeah. got the header away and, and then sped up the field like yeah. nobody's business. He, he, he's asked, I've never seen any, anything like uh, Ronaldo. I mean, no. He's in terms of like attitude, in, uh, I've never seen an attitude like him. He no. has an attitude, Eamon, that, in my opinion, that... He doesn't care if he doesn't touch the ball no. for 20 minutes. Yeah. Now, I've never seen a player that didn't want to get into the game. Yeah. You know, saying, well, I'm not doing anything. I better get in and get it. He doesn't care. No, he's he doesn't doing care that because all mind. he wants to do is score goals. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and as you say, some people say when they criticize, the only thing he does is score goals. <laughs> like he does, he, do, he doesn't do, he doesn't do much, but he has the temperament and, and, to, to not be bothered about not touching the ball for 20 minutes because all he's worried about, not worried about, or thinks about, is scoring goals. Yeah. And of course, like if, you, if you're playing with, with, with Ronaldo, I mean, a lot of players would say, hey, come on, get a move on, get a new one. You know, <laughs> he, like all he says, look, stay where you are. He finished up the other day, I mean, he had to go to kick of the ball. Yeah. And he finished up with two goals. That's again. Right. Yeah, that again was, and again and again and again. Yeah, that was again. So you'd that, live oh, with him, you know. You'd live with him. The only player I've seen a, a little bit like that was Jimmy Greaves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jimmy, Jimmy didn't care what he and 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 but he had players around him inside. Like Dave McKay, Dave McKay demanded everything of every player, and he's one of the great players. He never said a dicky word to Jimmy Greaves. Yeah, no, no. Let me just finish, John, by telling you something you probably won't know. Um, after the game on Saturday. This young lad, uh, Robin Gosens, he's the German uh, left wing back, really, who played so brilliantly and was actually named as man of the match. Mm. Um, so he he, he said um, he uh, went up um, to it, when he played against Ronaldo before. Uh, he was playing for Atlanta, mm. and they played uh, Ronaldo, Real Madrid. Um, oh no, they played the Juventus rather, and Ronaldo was playing for Juventus. And the kid said, I walked up to Cristiano after the match and I said, Can I have your shirt? He didn't even look at me, he just said, No. I was completely <laughs> blushed and ashamed. I went away and I felt yeah. very, very small. <laughs> it's yeah. rather sad, yeah. that isn't it? But yeah. he told I, would, I wouldn't be like, I wouldn't be surprised at him, I mean. No. Being like that, yeah. you know, he's 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 a, he's a. I'd say he's a very mercenary and good luck to him. Yeah. A apparently, didn't he go to, after a match one time? I think they're doing it recently. I mean, where they had Coca Cola and something else. Oh, he did. He did it at the press conference. I saw it. He, he, he took them two, away, didn't he? He did. And Coca Cola <laughs> shares went down by four billion in the next yeah. twenty four hours. See, like he's 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 obviously a, a, an intelligent lad with oh, a, a very that. very commercial. Yeah. Attitude, Eamon. I wouldn't say he'd be the most popular guy in the dressing room now. Uh, maybe you know? he'd be popular when he gets the goals. Just a final point. Oh, no, no, no. Um, we know that. We know, yeah. we know that. But on, on a personal level, I don't, yeah. I don't know the lad at all. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just guessing. But, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised at that lad telling that story. No, no. It's a, it's a, it's a, with it's his a, attitude. It's a sad story. <laughs> well, if you but, were... But if, you play, if you're playing with him, Eamon, you wouldn't care what he was like if he scored in the goals he scores. If you were doing a press conference and there was a bottle of Bacardi on the table in front of you, you wouldn't be pushing it to one side now, would you? No, I'd be drinking it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, John. It's a pleasure okay. to talk to you. Don't just let me ask you. I, I know it's ridiculous at this stage in the tournament where we're only weeding out uh, the non-runners. The non Who do you think is going to win it? Or is it too early to say? To make an intelligent... No, no, don't say if you. Can you make an intelligent assessment at this stage, or would you have to be an easy like me? Um, the latter. <laughs> well, well I, I, you go for the odds on that. I, yeah. I'd put a few bob on Germany. Wow, that's interesting. Okay, yeah. we'll hold you to that. Thanks, John. Okay. Uh, it's okay. great to talk to John Giles, always about football and Bacardi. Um, and we're grateful to John, of course.